now it seems that the Pandora box is not two X unleashed. It's not five X. It's a thousand X. It's, it seems like the exponential curve of of the things that we're gonna see, not only in terms of deep fakes, like I mentioned previously, but in terms of I don't really even know what's gonna happen. I don't. I just. It's hard to to to. It, it's difficult to imagine. So, Mike, please just walk me through this. What? How you you started the conversation with the AI threat of censorship is here, and how will that play out really in the in the really short term presidential election cycle? Now that we mentioned the 2016, and you know, let's let's then get into the future of the internet and freedom and censorship. Yeah, so you know the AI censorship era is is here. It has been here since late 2017, and the AI censorship Death Star weapon that I talk about, you know, just to just to flesh that out. So, yeah. you know, in Star Wars, there was this Death Star that Darth Vader is on, and the idea is is it's got this giant ray gun that can just blow up entire planets, and so they don't even need to go down with an army of a hundred thousand or a million people and invade the planet militarily occupy it and suppress insurgency groups they can just fire one gun and blow up the entire planet and it's over this is so, sort of similar to how nuclear weapons had changed the military terms of engagement uh, at after world war ii what ai censorship enables is rather than having hundreds of thousands of of sensors to contain and it really is at that level. There's well over 200,000 people who work in the content moderation industry. When you add up the 60 plus universities, the 100 plus NGOs, the you know the the dozens of government departments and agencies, the transatlantic side of that, both in the U.S. and then in every major NATO in every NATO country, and then at the Mechanical Turk level of actually you know clicking the buttons and the dashboards to take information down. It's it, but you don't need hundreds of thousands of people to contain a narrative if you can simply use a few lines of code to blow up an entire narrative all at once. This is what was done. Now, look, I was a political appointee in the Trump administration. I That's that's on my resume. Um, I don't consider myself to be a, a politically partisan person, uh, but, I, but and I, I try not to get into the substance of particular things like mail-in ballots and are they safe or not i try to stay at the censorship layer but the fact is is we in the 2020 election we had a really extraordinary thing where it was the first time universal mass mail-in ballots were ever used in this country they have had a very dicey reputation ever since the the, the election of 1864 with abraham lincoln there were controversies around around fraud with mail-in ballots the fact is, is that the election did play out with seven states all flipping. The, the election result actually flipping is the result of mail-in ballots the day after the election. And and every state adopted these mass mail-in ballot um, uh, rules, but they did so in an environment where the information ecosystem was rigged because AI censorship tools were used to blow up the planet of talking about mail-in ballots. Every The Department of Homeland Security partnered with this pressure group called EIP, without getting into too much detail, to to create a speech ban on anyone who is said to to discredit the perceived legitimacy of mail-in ballots. And they programmed this in at the AI layer. So anyone who talked about, uh, about fraud, anyone who talked about um, safety and security issues with these would all lose their Twitter accounts, their Facebook accounts, their Google accounts if they talked about it. It had a massive chilling effect. And look, if you don't have a Google account or a Facebook account, you can't have a sales and marketing job in this country. I mean, there are millions of people who have flower shops and if you know, and who felt chilled that if they said, "Hey, you know, I'm not actually sure. I like, I want my local representative to support this mail and ballot measure." You can't even advertise on, you know, next door. You can't even, you know, advertise your donut shop unless you've got access to these platforms. So people keep their mouths shut. They self censor, and then this creates a political inertia so that you can't even change the policy because you can't create the pressure for it online to do it. The same thing was rolled out for COVID-19. Um, this group, the Virality Project, detailed 66 different narratives that they helped the social media companies uh, mass ban at the narrative level using AI. So that is anyone who talked about COVID origins, 
anyone who talked about negative efficacy on vaccines, anyone who talked about, you know, ab- about, um, about mandates and lockdowns. They have 66 different narratives, which are all programmed into the AI le- layer. So you can just imagine the censorship Death Star every time a million people get together and say, you know what? I'm not a big fan of, of lockdowns and my, my business being shuttered. This Death Star just goes around and says, okay, everyone in this community, we're now evaluating you as a political birds of a feather for, for being vaccine hesitant or for being you know mandate skeptical. We are now going to blow up this entire planet online. That is, they all get algorithmically throttled. They all get uh, uh, throttled at the same trust and safety layer. And it just takes them all out at once. It's like it's like if after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, the U.S. had just gone around and used nukes in the Korean War, and then you know used nukes in you know in, in skirmishes in Latin America. We are at this point now where where these censorship super weapons. There's no terms of engagement on how to restrain them. There's no non-proliferation, and they're being used to control political outcomes in every major uh, election in the world now, including through our CIA, which is now working in 85 different countries, rolling out this AI censorship infrastructure to rig elections in Ghana, Tanzania, Latin America. I mean, they think this is the key to po- to political control. Wow, that's that's brilliantly put that, you know, I've been also thinking about that idea that we are really playing with AI and there's no regulation, there is no framework to play with it. It's just, let's just go with it as it goes in, like you say, it has real life consequences, not only in elections, which elections are really, that in of itself, that's just huge, but personal decisions of, you know, where to live, who to speak with, who to engage with, who to, you know, all of these ideas of civil discourse, the fabrics of society. How am, do I engage with people, you know, in the grocery store? Maybe they're a, a, another political party, so I'm skeptical about them. You know, even the fabric of the American society in itself has come into into real impact with AI. And so it's really interesting. 